Have you ever had chlamydia? Do you know someone who has? I bet even if you don't, you probably do. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, and today I'm gonna share 11 surprising facts about chlamydia that I bet you didn't know. Chlamydia is a bacterial sexually transmitted infection from the bacteria Chlamydia trachomatis. And chlamydia can be passed through any type of sex. It can be from anal sex, vaginal sex, or oral sex. And semen does not need to be present for you to get the infection. Number one, chlamydia is a silent infection. What that means is that 70% of women and 50% of men who get infected by chlamydia don't know they have it and they won't get symptoms. That's why it's super important to get screened if you're having unprotected sex. Also, we don't know how long the incubation period is. So if you get chlamydia from a partner, it may not appear, symptoms might not appear for several weeks after you have had intercourse with that partner. Signs and symptoms of chlamydia in women can include abnormal vaginal discharge, urinary symptoms like your pain with urination or urinary frequency, having bleeding that is not during your cycle. So in between, cycles or having abnormal bleeding in between and or pelvic pain. In men, the most common symptoms are urethral discharge, which are sort of a watery mucusy discharge or having urinary symptoms like dysuria or basically developing a urethritis. Number two, chlamydia is the leading sexually transmitted infection. In fact, it is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the world. In the world. In 2021, in the United States alone, there were 1.6 million cases of chlamydia reported. That's not a small number. Number three, it can cause infertility. So when you get chlamydia, it's a bacterial infection of the cervix or the urethra. So let's talk about women first. Now, more often, we see more serious problems happening in women with untreated chlamydia. So that can be infertility. And the reason for that is because those bacteria go in that fallopian tube, they can cause scarring. This can then make it difficult for sperm to reach the ovary to have then a fertilized egg. So you could have difficulty with fertility. And if you are able to fertilize an egg, that egg can get stuck on the way to the uterus and you can have ectopic pregnancies. And in some cases, it can lead to a condition called pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. In women also, rarely it can cause inflammation of the capsule of the liver and the peritoneum or the lining of the abdomen. And this can create liver dysfunction. So this is really serious. It's why we tell people to get chlamydia treated. In men, because it can get to the epididymis, you can get infections of the epididymis as well as pain in the testicle. Number four, chlamydia can occur in other body parts. Specifically, it can occur in the eye and in the anus. So again, if you're having anal sex with someone that is infected, you can get anal chlamydia. Now, if you get anal chlamydia, you can have symptoms like pain down there or rectal bleeding. You can also get it in your eyes. If you touch genitalia that's infected and then rub your eye, you can get an infection like pink eye or conjunctivitis. Now, it's not the most common cause of pink eye, so you don't to worry every time you get pink eye that it's because you had a sexually transmitted infection, but it can be a cause of it. And in some cases, you can get an arthritis that comes along with the chlamydial infection. It's a reactive or an immune response to getting chlamydia. And we have a mnemonic for it that we learned in medical school. It's can't pee, can't see, can't climb a tree. So you get arthritis, so you get pain. You get obviously the urinary symptoms like the urethritis, so you can't pee and without pain. And then you can't see because you get the conjunctivitis. You can also get it in your throat. So if you're having oral sex with someone with chlamydia, you can get ulcers in your mouth, a sore throat, or other signs that you would often see with a sore throat that can be due to chlamydia rather than regular strep throat or other causes of sore throat. Number five, chlamydia most commonly happens in young people. So we see that two thirds of chlamydia infections, so the large majority are happening in people ages 15 to 24. And that sort of makes sense because you're having most partners because you're not often in a monogamous relationship. But also, as I mentioned before, a lot of people don't have symptoms and young people have excellent immune systems. So very often they're not showing symptoms. It's estimated that one in 20 young people has chlamydia or has had chlamydia. That's a 
that's a lot. It feels like a lot to me. Number six, it's preventable, right? If you have safe sex, meaning you use a condom or a dental dam when you're having intercourse, whether it's oral, anal, or penetrative vaginal intercourse, using a condom can dramatically decrease your risk of sexually transmitted infections, including chlamydia. Number seven, this goes without saying, regular testing is super important, again, because we don't have symptoms. So if you think you may have gotten, you may have had a new partner and you didn't really ask them about their, about their sexual history, please get tested. There, no doctor will ever shame you for asking for a test for sexually transmitted infections. Never, never, never. And if they do, you should find a new doctor. So it's super important to just get tested. It is a super easy test. It's as simple as either a swab or a urine test. And so it's really easy to do. It's really easy to get results. And it's super important. In fact, there's even home testing kits now that you can use to test yourself if you're concerned and don't want to go to the doctor. Highly recommend you get tested. Whichever way you do it, I'm happy. Number eight, if you're pregnant and have chlamydia, you can pass it to the baby. It's usually in the birth canal when you're delivering the baby is when they get it. And they can get symptoms like conjunctivitis, but they can also get pneumonia from the chlamydia. So it's important for anyone who is pregnant to get tested and treated for chlamydia if they have it. Number eight, you can get reinfected. Now, the most common way people get reinfected is that they have chlamydia, they get treated, but they don't get get their partners treated. So it's super important that when you get diagnosed with any sexually transmitted infection, that if you got it from somebody that you talk to that partner or any partners you've been with in the recent months to let them know that you've been diagnosed so they can get treated as well. Because if you get treated and then go and have sex with that person again, you will then get reinfected. So super important to do that. And if you are concerned, you can always get retested. So it is recommended that if you're concerned or you're high risk for getting a sexually transmitted infection, again, to get retested after three months to make sure you're clear. Number 10 is treatment is easy. So for chlamydia, the treatment is often antibiotics. And in some cases, you can get away with one dose of azithromycin. However, more commonly, people are prescribing doxycycline, which is another antibiotic that you take for seven days. So it's super easy to get treated. Now, if you're getting treated, if you get the single dose, you want to make sure not to have sex for seven days after you get the single dose. If you're taking the seven-day course, you should not have sex until you're completed that full seven day course and your symptoms need to go away. So if you have continued symptoms, make sure to go back and see your doctor and make sure that you have completely cleared the infection. And oftentimes your doctor will treat you for both chlamydia and gonorrhea at the same time because they're just so common and so prevalent. And so the risk here is that gonorrhea has developed some resistance. And so it's important to make sure that you don't have a resistant strain of gonorrhea that didn't get treated appropriately with the antibiotics you're on. Number 11, having a sexually transmitted infection like chlamydia makes your risk of getting HIV so much higher. The reason for this is when you get an infection, your body recruits all these inflammatory cells. And some of these cells are CD4 and CD8 cells, which are the targeted cells for HIV. So when HIV infects, it infects particularly those cells. So it makes it more likely that if you get exposed to HIV, that you will obtain or you will get the infection. Also, if you already have HIV and you get a sexually transmitted infection, it can cause what's called HIV shedding. So it can make some of the dormant HIV that's in your body become active so that when you have sex with someone, it's more likely that you're going to pass a higher viral load to that person and get them infected more likely than if you didn't have the sexually transmitted infection. Last but not least, animals can get chlamydia as well. That can include animals like birds, cats, dogs, and koalas. Now, good news is you can't pass chlamydia to your pets and they can't pass it to you because they are different strains of chlamydia. But yes, your pets can also get chlamydia. I hope you guys enjoyed learning these surprising and hopefully new facts about chlamydia that will encourage you to go get treated. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my whole surprising facts series where I talk about things like the female body, the erection, and the prostate. So you can learn all new facts about these areas of the body. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.